Today's uh, convocation speaker for most of us needs no introduction, but certainly for the freshmen, it would be good for me to introduce uh, Father Jose Maria Castillo. Father Castillo is a graduate of Jesuit High School, and the Jesuit is name, his birth is Orlando Castillo. Father Jose Maria is the name he took in religious life. And uh, Orlando graduated from Jesuit in 2000, a number of times over the past few years past several years he has spoke here uh, before the student body and before other groups on campus about his vocation and his work and the work of his religious community in impoverished areas of Peru. When he graduated from Jesuit in 2000, Father Jose Maria was the recipient of the Father Charles J. Lashley S.J. Award. That's the graduation <laughs> award that is the highest honor that the school confers upon a graduating senior. He enrolled at the University of Notre Dame and then transferred to Franciscan University of Steubenville, where he graduated. Father Jose Maria returned to Tampa and he joined the Family of Jesus the Healer, which is a small religious community that was founded by a priest in this area in the late 1990s, Father Philip Scott, who was a priest in the Diocese of St. Petersburg. He founded this small religious community, which initially served the poor and the homeless in Ybor City. And then later they relocated to Peru near the edge of the Amazon, of the edge of the rainforest. Father Jose Maria and the family of Jesus the Healer were the subject of the 2008 award-winning documentary film, The Calling, which chronicled the beginnings of the community here in Tampa and its move to South America. Father Jose Maria was ordained in August of 2011. It's a really great pleasure to welcome him back to Jesuit for Convocation. Please welcome. Well, I always like to begin now uh, with a Hail Mary. So if you guys can say with me, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hey, good morning, guys. Morning. And it's really good to be with you guys again. And thank you to Paula Hermes and for, for welcoming me. And also Nick Zazinski, who was the one that made this happen. I shot him an email and it happened to work out. But it's good to be back. Uh, who, have there been, I know that last year I was here, so some of you have already, we've already had some time together. That's good. And well, I wanted us to come and just share. I think I got about 15 minutes or 18 minutes. Just a little bit about the things that I'm experiencing over there in Peru. Uh, I live in the jungle of Peru. You know, the mosquitoes are like this size, you know? And they just like bite you. They take you up, like half your blood on each bite, you know? There's insects that go up in places I'd rather not talk about because they're being filmed at this point, you know? And, uh, and I'm in the jungle of Peru in Puerto Maldonado and just serving the people over there. You know, and there's a part of the gospel, or actually the Bible, not the gospel, in Revelations where it says, you know, I know you live where Satan has his throne. And that about sums up where I live, you know? <laughs> and that, that's about it, you know? And, uh, but you know what I see is that the greater a darkness is, you know, the greater something is, it's like the more God likes to show up. The more God likes to do. It's kind of like what St. Paul says, you know, where sin abounded, grace abounded all the more. But the point of my uh, sharing with you this morning is that I just really want to like unmask, you know, everything that the world can tell us is what will make us happy, you know? I just want to not just unmask it, just put on the gun sense, talk on it a little bit, just step on it, you know? And just tell you the truth is what really is, what really can make us happy, what really can make us feel, you know? I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was last year or a couple years ago where I talked to you about this girl I really liked, you know, and actually Mrs. Phillips actually found, I think, a note that I wrote to her in French class at one point, you know, you know, I, this person was it, man, I made it, you know. There was a young woman that just went down to do a missionary, a mission work with us, and she's this blonde, beautiful, tall woman, you know. She's about, I don't even know how old, 21 or something, very young and everything. You would never think that the age of 14 years old, she contemplated suicide. 
You know, she's got what the world says, you know, in all the glamour magazines, all the girls are looking at you. You got this, and you made it, you know? You got this, and that's it, man. You got it, you know? She had beauty, she had intelligence, she was really good at volleyball, she was athletic, and at 14 years old, it wasn't enough for her. And she said to God, I'm going to commit suicide. I, I don't want to live anymore. And it reminds me of Tony Montana from Scarface, right? I don't know if anyone has seen that movie. But he gets this big old statue, right, that says, I want the world and everything in it. But the truth is, the world is not enough for you. The world is not enough for you or for me. And this young woman had to go to a retreat that she was forced to go. She didn't want to go. And she had ended up being in front of the altar when they exposed the Blessed Sacrament, when the Eucharist was put on that altar. And people around her began to cry, began to just start weeping. And the first thought she thought was, what's the problem with all these people, you know? But then as time was going on, those tears began to penetrate her, and she started crying. And she heard the words of God in her heart that said to her, you know, you don't love yourself. You don't even like yourself, but you are precious in my eyes, and I love you. And then she just really started sobbing. And in that moment, the depression lifted from her. That moment, the sadness, the loneliness lifted from her. And now you see her being doing missionary work in other countries. She just went to Peru, and she's full of life. What only this man up here can give, and what the world cannot give, but the world gives us so many counterfeits all the time. You know, they got that big fat guy with the white beard, ho, 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 and they're like, you know, buy this Blu-ray DVD, 50 off, and you'll be happy, you know? Buy these, buy these TVs, and you're gonna be good, you know? You get that curved, you know, TV, I don't even know how much that thing costs, like a house it costs, you know? There's this huge, like, curved TV. You buy these things, you have these things, and that's gonna make you happy. That's gonna make you make, you know, here in the United States, I love to dis just take off the mask of everything, you know, whether it's money, whether it's fame, whether it's power, you know, all these things that promise us if we have this, if we made it, then we're happy. There was a man here in the United States who was a bodybuilder, kind of like my size, you know, got a lot of muscles, and uh, he was a trainer, physical trainer, and he got married to this woman that was like the perfect measurements, you know, in Spanish they say 30, 60, 90, you know, the thing was really serious, you know. You know? And so she married this, she, he married this woman, not because he loved her, but because he loved her. You know? So it wasn't because he loved her, it was because he loved her. And that's why he got married to her. And so this man was a physical trainer, had muscles like bigger than my head. You know, this bicep was about my head. You know, he's got his, he's got his house, he's got his car, you know? And he's got this girl that's like, you know, Barbie, you know? And so what happens? It's not enough. He gets bored. I need another one. So he gets two girls. No, both of them think that's the same. You know, both of the girls, he's with both of them. Sometimes he's at the same time. And you know what happens? He got born. And he kneeled down one day before God. And he said, you know what? If something does not change, I'm going to take my life. I'm going to commit suicide. If this week, you don't do something. At the end of the week. Thanks be to God that week, Father Philip Scott, who Father Hermes mentioned in the beginning, went to do a parish mission at that parish. And he, and he got close to Father, spoke with him, confessed his sins, and brothers, that's where he found life. He had everything that the world says, if you have this, then you made it. But it made him only dust. It made, there was only a big hole in his heart. And the truth is, Ecclesiastes 3.11, you guys got to, you can look that up afterwards. Yeah, Ecclesiastes 3.11, God says, I put something in the human heart. What did he put in the human heart? A whopper with man, a lot of them. No, 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 okay? What else did he put on that? He said, chicken wings, a dozen, buffalo, boneless wings. It says in the Bible, Bible Ecclesiastes 3, 11, God put infinity in the heart of each man, in each person. And that's why nothing can fill. You know, and, you know, money, titles, fame, you know, Robin Williams, you know, I like to preach about him because, you know, he had it all too, right? He, was, he had fame, he had all this power in the sense that many people looked to him, looked up to him. You know, he was a famous celebrity. And what happened? You know, he took his life. And one of his phrases was like, I was addicted to everything. You name it, I was addicted to that. Because the world is not enough. And only he. And, all, and that's what the world needs. And I'm going to ask you guys something, a question. So if fame doesn't make it, if money doesn't make it, 
If power doesn't make it, then what is that will make you happy? Who can tell me that? Who can tell me that? Who, who can tell me that? What makes for happiness? What makes for being full right here? Who can tell me that? Can anyone tell me that? But you get it, you'll get an A in the Mr. Davis's English AP class. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the answer. I think you probably have it. You're just very humble. You don't want to say it. You know, but I asked this to young people in Peru. And I'm like, what makes for happiness? And they say to me, God. And you know what I say to them? Great. When are we going to take that seriously? When are we going to take that seriously? When are we going to give God our time? When are we going to give God our heart? When are we going to go to Him before the Blessed Sacrament, go confess, go receive the Eucharist? When are we going to take that seriously? You know, a good preacher comes and he tells you, you know what, everything else is nothing. I'm going to give you hundreds of examples of how money, titles, whatever, nothing can make you happy. Nothing. There's so many, so many examples, and only God can. But when am I going to take that seriously? When am I going to begin to live that? When am I going to start this? When? Until maybe I'm old. You know, I'm like this old without any teeth. I'm like, they're falling out. You know, got that hair going all over the place. <laughs> I would like that to be now, you know, with you and with me. And that's why I've come here to share with you, you know. And I, I'm a priest now in Peru. It's here in Jesuit where I experienced, you know, a big part of my vocation, a big part of my change, a big part of the vocation. You know, like I, was, I said a few years ago, I was in Coach Lundy's class. May the Lord take him and have him close to him. He passed away. And I was just making fun of a guy named Jeff Klein next to us who had like perfect SAT scores, you know, he got, literally, he got 1,600, you know, and this guy knew all the presidents of the United States by heart. You tell telling Andrew Jackson, he knew the one before, he knew the one after. You know, I'm pretty much like Bill Clinton, I think the next one was George Bush, but he knew all of them, you know, from like zero to now, you know. The guy was smart, but he just had this kind of voice, it was like, ow, 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 you know. And so, he was right next to me, and I was weird with Ryan Hewitt next to me. I shouldn't make it mention names, but anyways, he was right next to me, and then we were like just kind of laughing, you know, at Ryan and just put his book back inside out and everything. I had to repent about all these things, you know, I confess. But anyways, you know, I think we were good friends too, you know, it's kind of fun. But anyways, and Jeff was right there, I repented. Anyway, we were just laughing and everything, and then all of a sudden these seminarians walk in, and it was like everything stopped for me. And in that moment, I felt this peace. And this like, cloud of peace has come right over me to say, remember this, remember this calm. You were these seminarians coming to talk about why they want to be priests. And when I felt the presence, they didn't even know to work, I already felt this presence and this peace. And so when I was in Rome, the next, because I was pretty good at putting that calling away, but when I was in Rome, again it came back to me. I went with my parents. And I, and I remember saying a few years ago here, I was dating a girl, maybe I shouldn't mention her name, but I was dating a girl. And I, at that moment, I just felt again that peace, that peace that nothing else compared to that peace. Nothing else compared to that peace. And something was just saying, just let go and say yes. Just let go and say yes. And then I had an image of this girl going down the aisle with another guy. And I was the priest that was going to marry him. You know, I thought to myself, I think I grabbed the guy, and start punching him, beating him up, you know, kicking him. The next day in the, in the newspapers, you know, priest kills bride and bride groom, you know. And so I was like, this can't be, you know. But, but the Lord did not stop knocking at my door. And brothers, like I said this morning, right before, you know, I love to compare. I live in the jungle, right, away from Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's breaking. There's no KFC, unfortunately. I'm still praying for that. You know, hopefully pretty soon they'll have it there. But I live way out there, left my friends, left my family, right? And I told you the mosquitoes are about this big, right? They take away all your blood, right? You sleep on this hard, hard and wood thing. And there's this profound, deep joy that only he can give. You can have everything, but if you don't have him, you have nothing. And you can have nothing. Nothing. But if you have him, you got everything. And my friend here that lives around here, I can't say his name either. He's a dentist. Yeah? He charges like two hundred dollars every time you open your mouth. So when I see him, I just go out and say, How are you doing? No. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. Yeah, because he's just starting right. He's got a whole bunch of horses, he's got a house, he's got an Audi, costs about forty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. And he says to me, You know what? There's still something that's not right here. There's still something that's not full here. There's still something that's not right here. The world needs him. The world needs nothing less than him. The world needs him. And we need him. 
And I want to finish with this story in the jungle. You know, I go to the jails. I don't know if, I, if you guys remember from last time that I told you about the, the crime of the century, the guy that blew up the armored car with the bazooka. His name was Carlos. Well, we met him in the jail there. He called the crime of the century. And in the jail, it's a pretty dark place. But like I said, the Lord in the darkest of places, it's like he shows up. That's where he does his best work. One of the ways, I go there, a lot of the crimes there, some of the crimes for the women are being owners of prostitution houses. So they sometimes human trafficking and things like that. You know, like young girls and things like that, 13, 12 years old, you know, it's a really bad situation. So I go to that jail, right? And I go and I bring my guitar, you know, and I'm like sitting amongst all them, like, I love my way, I love my way, I love my way. You know, I got all these women around me and they're like, you know, singing too. And there was this one woman that just came in the room and she was dressed like holy moly, you know? She was dressed like killer, you know, just her, just the way she wore, like enough to like knock me down, you know? And this woman like was all dressing, you know? Sometimes I joke, I say, I don't know where you get your wardrobe, you know? You must go to like your little brother of three years old to get his shirt, you know? And you're like, mm. <laughs> okay, let's go, you know? <laughs> anyway, she had one of these things, and, and so she sits next to me, and she's like, ah, oh, la, ba, I'm with my guitar, you know, my, like, the guitar's like my defense system, you know? And I'm like, la, ba, de, la, 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 la. Well, the thing is, you know, this woman starts singing with us. She starts getting into it. She starts going like, the Lord is great, the Lord is great. You know, this owner of a prostitution house that was a woman, she got put in jail. And the second time, the third time, we sang the song that was like, today I come back to you. And she said to me, Father, I need to go to confession. Today I need to go. I need to come back. And we got, we got in the car, we got into like this little corner, and she just had a merry back going, an hour long confession, sing all her life. Crying, boogers everywhere, you know, you know, it was a remarkable, remarkable change. And she said to me, you know what? Oh, I've had everything. Because of my work, I've had the best TVs, I've had the best laptops, I've had the best of the best. And nothing compared to what I'm feeling at this moment. Nothing compares to him. The next time I came, she had like a nice shirt on. Like she wasn't dangerous anymore, you know? Like there was peace, you know, peace. And the change in her was so radical that her colleague that was put in jail about a month later, my soul, when she came, she saw her so different, so changed, so touched, that what the heck happened to you? Whatever you got, I want that too. Whatever you got, I need that. She went to confession too, had a lot of regrets herself, you know, a lot of, a lot of things, but she, what she saw in her, her. So brothers and sisters, that's my message for today. And that's my message that I see even in the jungles of Peru. There's only one. There's only one. And at the end of the day, we can be doctors. We can have like 14 doctors and everything. We can be like the best scientists in the world. We can have the million cars, the Corvette, the Porsche, or whatever. We can have the biggest house on the block. But in the end, it's nothing. In the end, it's nothing. If he is not in the center. If he is not right there. And so my brothers and sisters, I want to finish this night, not this night, this morning, with you. I want to invite you guys to do something with me. I'm going to, I'm going to sing a song. I don't know if you guys remember last year's song. You guys remember last year's song? Yeah. And so I want to ask you guys, um, if you guys can uh, close your eyes for me for a second. Yeah? Close your eyes for me. And... Uh, I want to put, if you, I'm going to invite you guys also, you can open up your hands while you're there. You know, while you're, while you're sitting there with your eyes closed. And as you have your eyes closed, um, I want you to put in your hands your heart. So with our eyes closed, with your hands open, I want to invite each one of you to put your life in your, in your hands, your life, your heart. And I want you to put, it's a see in that heart, your dreams, your desires, your hopes. I want you to put in that heart the moments also where there might be loneliness or sadness or the difficult things that you may have to have lived through that you may have to have seen. I want you to put in your heart and your hands right there just all that you want. And I want
want to, in this moment, invite the Lord to that heart. Invite the Lord to your life. Invite the Lord to right where you are. Which is what Christmas is all about. And I want to take this morning to admit with you that we need Him. I want to admit with you this morning that, Lord, I need you. That, Lord, I need you. Come and rescue me. And come and fill me. Show me the way. Show me what makes for happiness. Show me what makes for joy. Show me what makes for fulfillment, Lord. And I want to, with, together with you this morning, admit to Him, this morning, I need you. And as we sing, just keep admitting to Him, we need you. And then trust your heart to Him and invite Him. I invite you to invite Him into your life and trust that heart and those dreams and those hopes to Him who alone can fulfill. his mother our mother hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen brothers and sisters let's give jesus applause how about that yeah let's go around.